Hello and you're very welcome to another edition of the Under Center Podcast. Dara here with you and we are continuing our preview for the 2023 NFL season. Today we are focusing on the Tennessee Titans and joining us we are delighted to welcome Jake Robertson, writer with Glory Day Sports and avid Tennessee Titans follower as well. I'm sure. Jake, how are you, sir? Hey, doing good. Thanks for having me, guys. We are delighted to have you on, and we're really looking forward to talking a bit of the Titans because, you know, they are sometimes the, you could say, the forgotten team of the AFC at times, you know, they kind of looked over, and obviously everyone is focusing, everyone on the AFC side this year is focusing on, you know, the old shiny new toy in New York um, by the name of Mr. Aaron Rodgers, and I guess the Titans have kind of been allowed to, you know, go on um, and go on about the business quite quietly. Oh, 100%. Yeah, uh, before Aaron came to the Jets, Ryan Tannehill, he was the oldest quarterback in the AFC. Um, we have the we have such a loaded, loaded conference with guys like Aaron now, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert. And he's, the list goes on and on. So the Titans, when you look at them from a from a far view, they aren't the the exciting team in the AFC, but we'll definitely be up there and contending this season. Absolutely, and guys, I, I meant to, I should have said done this before, but Fion, Al, how are you guys? I'm very sorry I didn't in, introduce you yet. <laughs> Looking very color coordinated, both wearing your maroon today. I did not get the memo about that. Thank you. Yeah, well, I don't know. Is there much maroon in your house, Dara? You're a bit of a, a navy and green and silver household. No, you don't. I don't know. There'd be much maroon floating around your neck of the woods. There wouldn't be, but there shouldn't be an Al's either. But he's got, he's got the maroon rocket. <laughs> Well, he's just um, got a fashion sense, Dara. There's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dara. Look at, look at him blushing there. Look, you've got him blushing now. <laughs> he stumbled his words. He doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> uh, well, look, listen. We have plenty of opportunities later on in the week where we're going to be doing our own preview for the season. We'll talk a lot about the uh, the navy green and silver. I'm sure we'll talk a lot more maroon as well, but this is going to be purely uh Tennessee Titans today and Jake sort of we talked a little bit there about sort of Tannehill and stuff you know I want to sort of change it completely here and I want to ask for about those new throwback jerseys and whose name are you, would you be getting on the back of those throwback jerseys oh man I am so excited for this I've been waiting for years my family is from Houston and that's originally how I I was originally a Houston Oilers fan and then followed the team to Tennessee. And then a lot of us, they fell off like my grandpa. He's a Texans fan. And uh, ultimately, I love rubbing it into their faces every time we smash that that rival. Um, but, man, I think we're breaking them out for the Falcons game. I am so excited. And if, I, if I'm if i getting one, it's a Jeffrey Simmons jersey, 100%. Already decided. It's going to be amazing. Nice. Yeah, Much love I for love- the defensive line. I love that. Yeah, we, we had a bit of a conversation because Al's a Seahawks fan and they obviously are doing a, a quote-unquote throwback jersey as well. Throwing back to what? I don't know. They haven't had a whole lot of success, but I really like I really like what the Titans have done and they've actually thrown it back to a real a piece of history. I think that's really cool. Oh, 100%. It looks good too. Which yeah, always it helps. Definitely helps. It does. Well, look, let's talk about the football itself. Um, and we are going to have a look at, for, I guess we started with Tannehill. Let's go back to him there. Um, you mentioned he was the oldest quarterback in the AFC before Aaron Rodgers joined the Jets. Um, he has had the uh, he has had a few tasks to do now over the last few years in terms of fighting off new possible QBs in Tennessee. Last season, it was Malik Willis, um, who actually, unfortunately, when he did get the job, didn't perform up to the levels expected, which obviously meant Josh Dobbs came in. Um, But now in the draft, of course, Will Levis um, was drafted um, to be, I'm, I'm guessing Jake sort of back up this year before maybe having a proper crack at it um, next off season. 100%. So, Barring an injury, Tannehill is our guy this season. We we know that. And even if the Titans miraculously were to bring home a Super Bowl victory, I think Tannehill is out the door after this season. Um, this upcoming game against the Saints in week one, 
I anticipate Willis being listed as the backup and then eventually as the season progresses. And even if Tannehill was to go down, even in week two, I think Will is the guy coming in. This is a guy that is brought in by Rand Carthon, on our new GM this season. This is his guy. And Willis took a lot of flack in that NFL draft upcoming into it um, just because of his senior season where he had a new coordinator. He was held together with chewing gum. He, he had turf toe. He had a shoulder injury, a dislocated finger. The fact that he even played last season was amazing. So I was a little bit higher on him than a lot of others coming into this year. But this is ultimately this front office's guy, and he will be the future going forward. And Malik will be that backup on a cheap deal, and I think he'll be one of the best backups in the league next year. How does the offense look, in your opinion, under Will Will Levis? What kind of uh, pros does he bring to the table? Obviously, uh, as a Commanders fan, any rookie quarterback, right, there's always that unknown. But let, let's talk about the ceiling side of things. Where do you think he adds some dynamism? I, I didn't follow him a whole lot in college, but I imagine just purely as a young quarterback, we talked about uh, Tannehill's age, having Derrick Henry and just nowadays, every every quarterback coming out of college, right, he's got to have some legs underneath him. Is that a dynamic that you think Rabel is keen to get a hold of into this offense? I, I don't know so much Vrabel, but Tim Kelly, our offensive coordinator, who was promoted this offseason, we're operating and switching our whole offensive system to more of a uh, Earnhardt Perkins system. So we're going to be running through the air more so than on the back of Derrick Henry. And that's a system that Will Levis operated in college. So that was the big key point I think of bringing him in over some of the other quarterbacks are still on the board at that point in time. Um, but will, he's a smart guy. Uh, I think the S two scores, those were the biggest things uh, talking points there uh, in the draft and guys like CJ Stroud that were incredibly low. Will Levis was only second behind uh, Bryce young last season. So the guy's got the, what he needs in between the ears athletically, we didn't see a lot of it last year with the turf toe and everything, but that year prior, this is a bowling ball. Once he gets out of the pocket, he very similar to a Josh Allen esque. not calling him Josh Allen, definitely not taking that step just yet, but a similar player in his size and athletic ability and a cannon for an arm. So. Um, sticking with the offense here. Um, obviously uh, one of the bigger, uh, off-season moves was they signed DeAndre Hopkins. Um, what do you think he brings to the offense? Do you think he can, you know, get some of the other guys, um, you know, improved? And how important is it that um, himself, Traylon Burks, and uh, Nick Westbrook, Akine, uh, you know, work work better together? How important is that for this offense? Oh, this this made or break our season if bringing in DeAndre. If we're if we're rolling out an NWI and a Traylon, as much as I love him, if you're putting all those chips in a second year breakout, you're 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 biting your tongue if it doesn't hit. DeAndre, we know he's got the biggest hands in the league for a wide receiver, second to only Traylon. Um, he's got that catching prowess. He's bringing in that leadership into the locker room. It added two wins to my season projections, just having him enter the building. And it just, it takes the pressure off Burks. That's the biggest thing and allows him to spread the field and actually be that deep threat for us. Having Hopkins be that underneath guy. Um, and additionally, it helps the secondary just going up against a guy like Nuke every day in practice is going to help elevate people like SMB, Sean Murphy Bunting and Elijah Molden, Rogers McCreary, Christian Fulton. This is such a big get for us this offseason and definitely the biggest one of the of the year so far. And Jake, how have you felt was the 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 locker room and that wide receiver room after he came in the building? I don't know how much access you've had during the the preseason workouts. Uh, Has he taken on that kind of mentor role or is he focused on himself and keen to get that super high reputation that he had straight back on the ball and really rack up some big numbers? Yeah, so definitely. So DeAndre 
one of his offseason training partners is Derrick Henry. So we knew he was going to come in. And the biggest knock for him I saw from a lot of people was DeAndre doesn't practice. Well, he's barely missed any practices since entering the building. So we know he's coaching up those guys in there. And he's once he's one of those guys that steps off the bus first because you know who Nuke is and what he's going to bring to this team. Uh, I should mention at this point in the show, we are brought to you by the Backpage Pub in Dublin. And that Backpage is the one, number one place to see the NFL action this year with uh, NFL Red Zone on all of their screens upstairs as long as well as plenty of great food and drinks. Also, there'll be a quiz this Sunday um, to promote week one of the season. Uh, your very own Under Center podcast will be there doing the quiz whiz and also they have plenty of uh like i said food but they also do a hot wings challenge as well which includes some great prizes in that if you can handle the heat jake are you uh are you a heat fan oh definitely definitely yeah i like to be too but my stomach is not <laughs> not at all <laughs> at the time i think i'm brave but then afterwards i'm I'm not at all. I'm not at all. I think that's that. true but, for most Irish people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. But I won't be putting my hand forward for any of those uh, hot wing challenges. <laughs> not a chance for sure. Um, but Jake, uh, at this part of the year, obviously, uh, all teams fans are probably at their most optimistic. And they look at their team and they look at players potentially primed for a breakout year. Uh, if you're trying, if you're making that prediction for the Titans this year, what player, maybe one on the offense, one on the defense, you think are primed to have a uh, a breakout year this season? There's so many options we could go with. You could go with Peter Scaronzi coming in as the most pro ready guard we've seen really since like Quentin Nelson that I can remember. Not going to go with him. You could go with Traylon. That's the easy one. Aaron Brewer moving from left guard to center. Um, even Aziz Al Shair, who's moving into that that mic role for us. But for offense, I'm going to give you a guy Chigo Zium Akonkwo, who is our second year tight end uh, coming out of Maryland. His biggest knocks coming into the league was slightly undersized, but this guy is a freak athlete. In comparison to somebody like Burks, he might not be the athlete that Burks is, but he's faster. Um, and his 40 shows that 452 to 455. This guy's got some burners. And I ultimately think he's going to take that next step this season. His snaps last year increased over time with Jeff Swain being that starting tight end. Um, and we brought in Trevon Wesco to be that blocking replacement this year. So he might not even be listed as the starter, but this dude is going to come in and immediately be our second or third target on the team. Um Last season, finished in 30th in targets for the tight end position, 20th in yards. So he's only going to improve. Um, and we saw that with the initial cutdowns from the 90 to 53 man. Um, they only kept three tight ends, which is unheard of for a Mike Rabel offense. Um, typically, it's four or five. We know we do have Thomas Okoye um, as an international pathway player as on the practice squad, but they're not going to bring him up. If they do, it burns that that pathway um, roster spot for them, and they have to get rid of it. two players as opposed to the one. But ultimately, I see a player that can jump into that 700-yard receiving range, nine-plus touchdowns. This dude is going to be a beast. Um, as far as defense, it's Roger McCreary, another rookie last season. Short arms for a corner, but played more snaps than any other defensive player in the NFL last season. And the mentality of this kid is just absolutely amazing. He's going to be out there every single game, getting the job done. And he's moving primarily from an outside role to the slot this season, which is a better suited for him physically, I believe. So keep an eye out on both, but both are going to be awesome. Jake, you named a couple of uh, second year players there. Where do you think, the team as a whole, which unit on the team needs to step up? Is it the obvious one? Is it quarterback in order to get an improvement from last year into this year? Or is there some other subtlety that you're seeing that you think this team needs to solidify from where it was last year in order to really go on a long run this season? 
For me, it's pretty easy. It's the offensive line, just in total. Um, last year, the 32nd team in the NFL, and we are moving around every piece this season. Brought in Andre Dillard to take over that left tackle row. Brought in Peter Skaronsky, like I was talking about earlier, to move into left guard. And then we move Aaron Brewer from left guard to center, and he's the only returning player on that. Right guard, we got Daniel Brunskill. We brought in from the 49ers, who played 500 plus snaps last season for them without allowing a sack. And then right tackle, it's a revolving door at this point in time. We had MPF or uh, Nicholas Petit Ferrer lined up there, but he he got the uh, six game suspension. So now we're playing with a roundabout there. And right now it's Chris Hubbard, and he's looked good in the preseason. But we'll see how he operates. And we've moved from more of a big hog molly style def- or offensive line to more of a finesse under rank Arthon. These are all great pass blockers, but not so much great run blockers. And when you got Derrick Henry back there, we're going to pound the rock. So it's seeing how this offensive line cohesively operates in the first couple of weeks. And if they can meld together as the season progresses. Yeah, and just uh, I want to ask about the the defense. Um, last year, um, the Titans were first or top five in a lot of metrics on run defense. Um, they were really good there. Where they really struggled was the pass defense, where in a lot of metrics they were last or close to last. What do you think the cause of that was, and what have they done to remedy that this year? So it was definitely a young secondary last season. And we were we were coming into that season thinking Caleb Farley was going to be our number one corner. Roger McCreary, he, he took a step up and was like, hey, I'm that guy. Caleb went down to injury, still injured, unfortunately. But we're looking at this team now, Christian Fulton, back healthy. We have... We had two of the most historic injury rented seasons these last two years with two years ago being the highest used players ever in a, in a season. So Christian Fulton coming back from that, that hamstring injury that dealt with him last season. And then Sean Murphy bunting being that guy that's coming in from Tampa Bay to take over that number two spot, Roger moving into that, that slot role is going to be great for us. Elijah Molden was another player that didn't play at all last season taking that number three safety role behind Amani Hooker and Kevin Byard, who I believe are one of the best safety tandems in the league. But what's going to help them the most is this pass rush. They are guys out the wazoo in this year. So Harold Landry got towards ACL uh, last preseason. So we never saw him last year. And he's our, he's our leading pass rush. So we get him back. We pair him with Jeffrey Simmons and Tierra Tart, who are two of the better interior pass rushers from last year. Then we bring in a guy like Arden Key, who is going to be the vocal piece of this year. And he he is he is a little firecracker, what we found this this preseason. And then bringing in guys like Travis Gibson out of Tulsa, um, who played at Chicago the last couple of years. They moved from a 3-4 where he was very successful to a 4-3 last year where he was not successful. So he actually requested a trade. They ultimately released him. We signed him. And then just pairing him with a guy like Caleb Murphy, who is an undrafted free agent this season, who had four sacks this last preseason, just a couple uh, weeks ago. And this is a man that set the FBS record for sacks in a season at Ferris State, which is a D2 college here in the States. And this guy has the potential to be the next great um, for us and actually take a starter role probably in a couple of years. So having that pass rush on a quarterback is going to make those passes into the secondary so much easier to make those pass breakups, to get the interceptions that we're looking for. And under a Mike Vrabel defense, these these turnovers are key. So ultimately, I think the secondary is going to take a big leap this season. Now, I have to ask you, because last week, there was a bit of craziness going on in the league, and teams were tri- trading substantial-ish, substantial-ish draft picks for kickers. And the Tennessee Titans were one of those teams that 
traded for a late thirties Nick Falk from the Patriots. Um, now, look, listen. Obviously, we're the Irish podcast, so we're unbiased. So we would obviously trade first round picks for punters like Dan Whelan from the Packers, obviously, because uh, for obvious <laughs> reasons. But what? I guess are you, are you on board with the idea of you know? sending decent draft picks for kickers before a season even starts before they and not giving them even a preseason game i don't think did he play this the last preseason game was he in time for that i don't think so but, i don't believe so uh i don't believe so but yes he has the experience but you know where that draft pick could be used somewhere else and the ability now to just pick up kickers off the street and for them to just slot in right away i can just say it is that a, is that a good move by by the team, or would you have liked to have seen them save that draft pick and, and obviously draft someone instead? So it, it was a seventh round draft pick, and here in a couple of years, so ultimately it's not a lot of draft capital for us per se. Um, but we we really didn't have a whole lot of choices. We could have brought in a Mason Crosby or a Robbie Gold or one of these other pretty much same age kickers in the league, if not older. Uh, Nick Folk, he's a guy. He, he's he's going to do okay. He's going to be middle of the pack. We've seen this the last couple of seasons from the Titans where they love to bring in these young guys, uh, undrafted free agents um, or whatever they're going to go about from that, and they go, okay, hopefully this is the guy. And like last season, we saw them do that at the punter position, and it paid off tenfold. Ultimately, this year we brought in Caleb Chudak, and Trey Wolf, and it didn't. They were awful in the preseason. So bringing in this guy, Nick Falk, to be the starter to start the season, going to be okay. What I'm excited for is we also brought in a man named Cade York, who is a fourth-round draft pick from last year for the Browns, I believe. They ultimately ended up cutting him. He was a very number one kicker coming out of high school, number one kicker coming out of college, which ultimately got him drafted in the fourth round. But – Turns out he's kind of a head case and can't really have that at the kicker position. So ultimately, hopefully, we can get this guy right wasn't, mentally. Sorry, Jake. Wasn't he the guy that got cut because he posted his highlights half time in the preseason game? Ooh, that I don't remember. <laughs> someone, I can't quote someone on that. or whoever whoever <laughs> runs his Instagram anyway was posting highlights on his on his official Instagram profile story oh, uh, at half time the preseason game. And then he went on to miss every other kick after that. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. That sounds about right. Um, started off pretty hot. I think he kicked a 61-er to, to win a game early in his career and then just kind of fell apart from there. So hopefully we can get him right. We know he's got the leg. We know he's got the, the accuracy. Um, but hopefully he'll be the kicker of the future, and Nick Folk will guide us until we get to that point. And then we'll revisit that next season, I'm sure. And we'll probably bring in a couple more guys knowing the Titans. Look, it's every team. Every team that does it. It just seems that no kicker can get comfortable in a team unless their name is Justin Tucker. That's the only yep. kicker that can get comfortable in the team. Um, from Going from that, obviously, to a more sort of serious um, aspect of it, um, cornerback Caleb Farley um, unfortunately lost his father in a devastating house explosion accident there a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, is there any indication when... Caleb would be available again um, to play. Um, has there been anything from either Coach Rabel or uh, Farley himself? So I don't believe anybody's came out and gave like a definitive, hey, this this is what we're filling for him. He is on the PUP, so he's out at least the first four games, and then we'll make a decision from there. Um, unfortunately, the man's body just hasn't held up to the league, and we knew that when he was drafted having the back surgeries, and that was, that was a real issue, and it's just kind of – came to roost from there and these tore his ACL a couple times. So what we're hoping for with him is he'll come back from POP. He has Chris Harris as his defensive back coach and our defensive passive passing coordinator. We've seen him transform a couple cornerbacks in the, the past. So hopefully his body can be get right. He gets some better coaching because the man just needs snaps. He's a converted wide receiver. We knew coming in he'd only played corner for a couple years, but he has all the physical intangibles. So 
prayers out to the man. We know he lost his dad recently and his mom died of cancer very not too not too long ago. I it was during the draft process, if I remember right. So this is a guy you want to cheer for and hopefully hopefully his body can just keep him right. Regardless, I've seen lots of Titans fans that are hoping he gets cut and a lot of it came before all of this news and stuff. But ultimately, he won't be cut. He would he would cost the Titans money if we were to cut him this season. So he's going to be on the team regardless this year, and then hopefully we can see that breakout for him. How how do you feel this year is going to go, Jake? Uh, give us maybe let's start off. What are your season's expectations? We're going to try and pin you for a record if you're willing to give it at, at this stage, and then we'll talk a little bit. Uh, week one matchup, I believe, is against the Saints, right? So let's go. First questions first. Season's expectations for you guys. Season expectations is a playoff berth. Having that be the AFC title, or AFC South title, or a wild card, I think that is the expectations. We know Mike Vrabel is one of the best coaches in the NFL, and we know with his injury ridden as we've been last season, which ultimately left us starting people like Josh Dobbs, I don't think that's going to happen this season. So floor. I think is nine wins and then ceiling I think is 12 to 13. Ultimately I have us flip flopping just about every game until the middle of the season where we get on a slight run and then we end pretty strong winning the division against Jacksonville in week 18 and booting the Jacksonville Jaguars out of the playoffs. I have us finishing 11 and six and ultimately getting that berth and then go, moving into the playoffs. And so you mentioned uh, flip-flopping. Week one is the Saints. Is that a flip or is that a flop? How do you feel that in terms of week one matchups? I'm not sure which one is which, but I have <laughs> no, us no, winning, yeah. <laughs> I have this winning week one. I, I think it's going to be a low-scoring affair. Derek Carr ultimately has not played well against the Titans. He has one win, I believe, in his career um, with the Raiders. And this pass rush, I believe they they dominate that offensive line. We cause a couple turnovers. Derrick Henry gets moving, and Tannehill gets to play with the new toys. I, I think New could catch touchdown here. Uh, ultimately, I, I see us winning a 21-24 ish to 17 game, um, and then we're off to the races. Excellent, Jake. It's been absolutely fantastic speaking to you for the last. Uh... 20 odd minutes we really appreciate the time and hey, look we uh we hope you uh, enjoy the season oh back at you guys we're looking forward to it and we're we're just a couple days away so you guys take care absolutely no doubt we will probably have you back on close to i think it's was a christmas eve uh the seahawks travel to nashville to take on the titans so i I'm believe sure, so i'm sure i'm sure we'll be in contact then for that commanders aren't on the fixture list now this year i don't think so not if you're playing no. the nfc west you won't be no no, no. No, that's all right. That's uh, I guess that's one guaranteed W you're not going to get, unfortunately. Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm a big Sam Al fan. I think he is that guy. And you hey. bring in guys like Terry McClure and I was high on Jahan Dotson coming out. That, that offense, I think they're going to get him moving. Look, Sam Hell might go up. Gino Smith's only going down. So, like, I'll take it. I'll take it any day to week. <laughs> Gino has the, um, the weirdest projection as far as a quarterback I've ever seen. It was uh, you, you called for his head for, I don't even know how many years, seven, eight years, goes to Seattle, dynamo. And they're bringing in JSN now. That, that offense is going to be it's fiery offenses. All he had to be is in a good organization. That's all. Oh, yeah. It That's makes all. me question if Russell Wilson was ever good, though. Uh, I, I can think the Broncos that. season no. proved that. Yeah, I think the Broncos season proved that. Fionn was just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I could swear, Jake, you've watched a couple of our shows before if you said Russell Wilson wasn't any good in front of Fionn. Uh, but listen, Al, Fionn, as always, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Like I said, we'll be back later on this week with our own uh, bumper prediction show for the season. But until next time, make sure you are following us on Instagram and Twitter at UndercenterPod. If you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't already, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are trying to build up as much as we can as soon as the season starts so you will know exactly when all of our shows go out and you can follow, watch them there. Or if you want to listen to them on the go, 
under Center Podcast, wherever you get your podcast, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you will find us there. But that's all the time we have for this evening. Until next time, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.